Welcome to a video tutorial for Vertica SQL on Hadoop. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to install and configure Vertica on a Hadoop cluster. Vertica SQL on Hadoop adds Vertica's powerful analytics to your Hadoop cluster. By installing Vertica on your Hadoop cluster, it can access your Hadoop data faster. See the Vertica SQL for Hadoop page for more information. A link is included in the blog article that accompanies this video. Here's the process we'll follow to install Vertica SQL on Hadoop. Configure Hadoop to make room for a Vertica install. Change operating system parameters on the cluster to meet Vertica's installation requirements. Install the Vertica binary package. Run the Vertica installer script. Create a Vertica database. In this demo, we will install Vertica on a Hortonworks 2.3 Hadoop cluster. Hortonworks was installed using Ambari, using mostly default settings. The cluster contains four nodes configured with 16 gigabytes of RAM, two processors, two network cards, one for Hadoop's use and one for Vertica's, and is running CentOS 6.5. This configuration is strictly a demonstration environment. The cluster's resources aren't sufficient for production use. See the Vertica documentation for recommendations on configuring a Vertica SQL on Hadoop cluster for production use. We need to change two Hadoop settings before we install Vertica on the cluster. These changes will reserve disk space and RAM on the nodes for Vertica's use. By default, the data nodes in a Hadoop cluster set aside a small amount of disk space for system use. HDFS gets to use the remaining disk space on the cluster to store its data. We will increase this reserved space to make room for Vertica's storage needs. Vertica still needs some disk space for its catalog and temporary storage even if you later configure it to store its data in HDFS. How much disk space you allocate to Vertica depends on how much data you intend to store. You can estimate the disk space you need by determining how much data you will store in Vertica and then add 40% to account for the catalog and temporary disk space. On this cluster, we have 70 gigabytes per node. To make things easy, Let's choose to allocate 50% of the space for Vertica's use. To free the disk space, we'll change the Hadoop setting that controls the space allocated for system use. Click on the HDFS service. Click on the Configs tab. Click the Advanced tab. Scroll down to the General section. In the Reserved Space for HDFS box, we'll enter 375-809-63840. Unfortunately, this value is expressed in bytes, so we have an awkwardly large value to input. Click Save. Optionally, enter a description of the change in the Notes field of the Save Configuration dialog, and click Save. Next, we need to reserve RAM for Vertica's use on the nodes. The easiest way to reserve this RAM is to reduce YARN's memory allocation. Usually, we would allocate the RAM by creating node labels for the nodes that will run Vertica. Then we would assign memory exclusively to those labels. In Hortonworks 2.3, we can use MBARI to reduce the amount of memory available to YARN. Click the YARN service. Click on the Configs tab. Under Memory, reduce the amount of memory allocated to all YARN containers by moving the slider to the left. We'll reduce the value available to YARN by 5 GB. Click Save. Optionally enter a description of the change in the Notes field of the Save Configuration dialog. Review and approve any dependent configuration changes that Ambari suggests we make. 
In this case, the system warns us that the value of 5 gigabytes is less than suggested. We'll accept this because we're not on a production system. For a production system, you would want to resolve these issues differently. Now we're finished configuring the Hadoop cluster. At this point, we have to restart the services for our changes to take effect. For convenience sake, we'll just stop all the services, because we'll need to reboot the cluster later. You usually don't have this option in a production system because of the impact on other Hadoop users. Next, we'll configure the operating system of the cluster to support a Vertica installation. Make sure your nodes meet the requirements listed in the Before You Install the Operating System section of the Installing Vertica document. Some of these requirements must be met when initially installing Linux. For example, Vertica is incompatible with disks partitioned using the Logical Volume Manager. You must use a standard partitioning scheme instead. If you have not yet set up your Hadoop cluster, read through this section before you install Linux on it. If you did not plan from the start to install Vertica on your cluster, you may find that it is incompatible. The remainder of the tasks in the Installing Vertica document can take place after you've installed Hadoop. These steps are the same as the process you follow to install Vertica on a dedicated cluster. You'll find that some of the steps have already been done because Vertica and Hadoop have some of the same requirements. We'll step through the procedures in the Installing Vertica section of the documentation. The first step is preparing disk storage locations. We've already reserved disk space for Vertica in the native file system of the nodes. If you choose to store your Vertica data in HDFS, you will switch to HDFS storage after creating a Vertica database. So we have nothing to do for this step. Configuring the network. There is usually no overlap between Vertica and Hadoop's port requirements. We can verify this using the following netstat commands. Currently, we're logged into one of the nodes in the cluster as root. We can see that none of these ports are in use. Since this cluster is within a protected network, we disabled the firewall earlier when installing Hadoop. If you are required to have a firewall enabled on your nodes, you must open the ports Vertica uses. See the Ensure Ports Are Available topic in the Vertica documentation for a list of the ports you need to open in your firewall. We can now go to the Manual Configuration section of the installation procedure. Vertica requires that all disks have a read ahead of at least 2048. We can check the current setting of the single drive on the system using this command. That's less than 2048, so we need to change the setting. We'll set it by editing the etc. rc local file. We'll add a block dev command to set the read ahead. While we're editing rc.local, let's skip ahead a few steps to tackle some of the other changes we may need to make here. On CentOS 6.5, the Linux kernel's transparent huge pages feature is incompatible with Vertica. Hortonworks is also incompatible with huge pages, so there is already code in this file to disable it. We'll next check the current I.O. scheduler for the hard disks. The I.O. scheduler sets the priorities for reading and writing data from the disks. Vertica needs the scheduler to be either deadline for spinning drives or no op for solid state drives. We'll shell out of the editor for a moment and check the I.O. scheduler being used on the node's only disk. The brackets around CFQ means that the drive is using the completely fair queuing scheduler. We need to change the setting to deadline because SDA is a spinning drive. 
We'll add this line to RC local to change the scheduler to deadline. Now we can save the RC local file. We need to distribute the updated file to every other node in the cluster. We'll use SCP to copy it to the other nodes. SCP does not prompt us for a password because the Hadoop install configured passwordless root login. Going back to the steps in the installing Vertica documentation, we can skip the settings for NTP. Hortonworks already requires it to be installed and running. Similarly, the Hortonworks install process asks you to disable the Linux kernel's SE Linux feature. We'll verify that this feature is disabled by running this command. The SE Linux equals disabled setting disables SE Linux. The next setting to change is the CPU frequency scaling. In our case, we disabled this feature in BIOS before installing Linux. Consult your hardware platform's documentation for instructions on disabling performance scaling. Our next task is to install the support tools that Vertica recommends, PStack, MCE Log, and SysStat. We want to install these on all nodes in the cluster. We'll use a tool named Parallel SSH to run a command on all nodes at once. It's not installed by default on CentOS. We can install it on just the node we're logged into using this command. Now we can install the packages on all nodes using this Parallel SSH command. Parallel SSH logs into all of the nodes simultaneously and runs the yum command for us. We must also install the dialog utility, which we'll do in the same way. Next, we need to set the time zone where the servers are located. On CentOS, we set this by editing the etc. sysconfig clock file. We're in the eastern US time zone, so we'll add this line to the file. Then we'll copy that file to all other nodes using SCP again. We'll also set the TZ environment variable as well by editing the setup profile D custom.sh file and enter this export command. While we're in this file, we'll also set the lang environment variable to set the default language. We'll set it to English UTFA. Save the file and again distribute it to all nodes using SCP. With that, we're done configuring the nodes. The easiest way to get our changes to take effect is to reboot the entire cluster. We'll do this using Parallel SSH. With the configuration steps out of the way, the rest of the installation is fairly quick. We're now ready to install the Vertica binary package. Installing it on a Hadoop cluster is identical to installing it on a dedicated cluster. You need to copy the RPM package to the node you are logged into. You can use whatever method makes sense for you. In our example, We've already used SCP to copy the RPM from another system into Root's directory. We've also copied the Vertica license file to this directory. You need a license for Vertica before you can create a database. Vertica offers a free community license, an enterprise license, and a license specifically for Vertica SQL on Hadoop. See the My Vertica website for information on obtaining a license. Once the cluster is finished rebooting, we'll log back into the node as root. We use this RPM command to install the package. We'll speed the process up in this video. And the package is installed. 
Now we're ready to run the Vertica install script. There's one special consideration when running the install script for a Vertica SQL on Hadoop install. We must specify the correct network address for the Vertica nodes. You want Vertica and Hadoop to communicate on separate networks. We can list the network interfaces on the node we're logged into using the command ifconfig. On this cluster, the ETH0 port is used by Hadoop. We'll specify the network addresses of the cluster's ETH1 port, which are in the 192.168.112 address range. For a Vertica SQL and Hadoop install, you usually only install Vertica on the Hadoop cluster's data nodes. This ensures that Vertica is co-located on nodes storing Hadoop's data. In production Hadoop clusters, some of the nodes may not be HDFS data nodes. For example, the name nodes are often not configured as data nodes. In our Hadoop cluster, all of the nodes are configured as data nodes, so we'll install Vertica on all four nodes. Here's the command to install Vertica on all the nodes using their IP addresses in the 192.168.112 network. You can use any other installation options you wish, such as an alternate database administrator username. See the Vertica documentation for the full set of options. Once again, we'll speed up this process in the video. Once the install script has finished, we'll copy the license file to a location where the database administrator account can access it. Now that the install script is finished, we're ready to create a Vertica database. Creating a database on a Vertica SQL on Hadoop cluster is the same as creating a database on a dedicated Vertica cluster. First, we need to log into the cluster as the DB admin user. Then we'll run admin tools. We're prompted to locate the license file. We'll supply the path where we copied the license file earlier. We'll accept the EULA. Obviously, you need to read and understand it before accepting it. Now we're ready to create the database. We'll enter 6 to go to the Configuration menu. Press Enter to select Create Database. Let's name this database vSQL H. Enter a password twice. We'll select the default to use all the nodes in the Vertica cluster. And accept the default for data catalog and storage. If you want to change the default data storage location for the database to HDFS, you can do so later. For now, though, the database will store data in the local file system of the nodes. Press Enter to confirm the creation of the database. And that completes our Vertica SQL and Hadoop installation. Once you've installed Vertica on the Hadoop cluster, you can use it like any other Vertica database. Here are some tasks you may want to perform with your Vertica SQL and Hadoop installation. Analyze data stored on HDFS, including in ORC format. Create an HDFS storage location to store some or all of Vertica's data on HDFS. Install the Management Console to monitor your Hadoop and Vertica SQL on Hadoop installation. See the links in the blog post that accompanies this video for more information about these tasks. We hope you've enjoyed this tutorial video. For more information about Vertica SQL on Hadoop, please see the Vertica documentation at myvertica.com/docs.